Hey everybody, this is Jed Johnson from DieselCrew.com, and of course you know they call me Napalm. This is episode 130 of This Week in Grip, and I'm doing this one completely solo. I had a few minutes here, and I'm just going to try something a little bit different from normal. So I'm sitting here in my office at the gym, and I'm in Pennsylvania, and I'm not allowed to run my gym right now due to the uh, current health situations that are going on in the United States. And I just had a few minutes and I thought I would go ahead and do something just that I've never really done before that I recall for this week in grip. And just kind of going to fly by the cuff, by the seat of the proverbial pants, and record a show without a real plan. So hopefully this goes pretty well. The first thing, uh, well what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down through the comments that I've been getting on my YouTube and... You know, just kind of respond with whatever makes sense for whatever the comment is. I've put up a lot of videos lately because A, I have the time, and B, uh, people seem to be enjoying what I'm putting out. So that's that's the idea. Uh, and it, it uh, allows me, by doing it this way, I can do a lot of this stuff all at once. I'll be able to put it up and then hopefully be able to, uh, people will be able to listen to the responses to the comments. So... Uh, first off, before I get into that, just something that uh, I saw happen over the weekend is Adam Glass ended up doing 200 lifts on 200 plus lifts with the Thomas Inch dumbbell in an hour. Uh, that's that's a tremendous feat of grip endurance. Um, I don't think I've ever done anything for an hour. I've done plenty of times the inch dumbbell for 10 minutes. And I believe I got 60. Um, I've done countless grip rushes, uh, just 60 second AM wraps with whatever implement that try to use, whether it's inch dumbbell or blob, uh, sledgehammer finger walks. We've done all kinds of stuff, um, but haven't done it in a while. There's also another another thing that people are doing that's uh, high endurance grip strength, and that's uh, blob century. And what that is is 100 reps on the blob as fast as possible. The other day here at the gym, Luke <clears throat> did the blob for well over a hundred reps. I want to say it was like 140 reps in uh, 10 minutes. Uh, he set himself a, a 10 minute uh, period to do as many reps as possible. And he ended up getting, ended up getting well over 100. Like I said, I think it was like 140 repetitions. And I think it took them in the neighborhood of six, six and a half minutes or something like that to be able to get to the 100 rep mark. So I haven't tried either one of those things. I'm not really in a hurry to do them. Actually, lately, I've been much more interested in working with the 200-pound anvil because whatever for whatever reason, right now the 200-pound anvil is... Just going real well. It's going real smooth. I've been hitting a bunch of combination lifts with it. Uh, did the handle blob most recently. Also did a 50-pound blob curl along with picking up the 200-pounder. I've done 200-pounder um, plus... Well, I've tried the 200-pound Selene inch and have not been able to do that. That's, that's the hardest one as far as just locking it out. The... The blob curl while holding the 200-pound anvil is one of the hardest things I've ever done as far as, like, having to tough it out. Like, with the 200-pound anvil plus 200-pound dumbbell, it's like it just rips right out of my hand, the, the anvil does. There's something, like, I have to be able to, if I, if I can maintain, like, a certain wrist posture and angle and stuff while I'm lifting that 200-pound anvil, I'm, I'm very, very strong on it. And when the implement is nice and light, such as the blob or handle blob, then it does not interfere in my body posture in order to lift the 200-pound anvil. But when doing something like the 200-pound Selene bell, man, I am not able to get into the position that I want. The, the bell, you know, kind of keeps me hunched over. And any time that you're lifting two items and you have to lift them at different speeds, it brings in, not at different speeds, but at different times, it brings in an, an additional factor of difficulty. So with the, with the blobs and anything else, 
you know, you lift it, but you don't lift the anvil until you get to a certain height because you have to pull the blob from such a lower position on the floor. So you pull the blob up and then eventually you will lift the blob high enough where you start to engage onto the anvil. It doesn't happen right away. And uh, when you're doing that with the with the 200 pound Selene, you're lifting it. Then you start to gradually work to the point where you'll engage on the anvil horn. And when you do that, your momentum changes and it throws stuff off quite a bit. So it's it's going to be tough. I'm, I'm sure I'll eventually get it. I don't remember if I've even done the 200 pound anvil in one hand and then the inch dumbbell in the other. I don't, I don't know if that video is up or not. I don't know if I've even tried it. I just went right to the 200 pounder, I think. So we'll continue to try on it. So let's, let's go ahead and get into some of these comments that have come up on some YouTube videos that I've uploaded on the channel. Um, before I get to that, actually, if you check out the description box of any video that I upload, generally there's a short explanation of what's going on. And because sometimes it's not apparent exactly what I'm lifting in the video. So, or for instance, when I did the handle blob, some of, some people may not have watched any of my videos where I lifted the handle blob in the past. So they wouldn't know what the handle blob is. So I put that into the, into the description box. So make sure if you see anything that I put out and you're not sure what exactly is going on, go into this, the description box because I'll generally put information on what I'm lifting into the description box. Also, you know, with things going on, I've had to shut the gym down and I, you know, I just throw it out there. If, you, if you're going to be doing any shopping through Amazon, you can support the channel by going through my Amazon link. And I've been putting that in all the description boxes as well. So you can, you can go right to the description box. It'll take you to the, the it'll take It'll take you through my link to Amazon if you're going to buy some chalk or a gripper or you need to grab yourself some, some new training shorts or something like that, then you can go through my link and I'll get a little kickback. It's not much, but it'll help out. So that's an option. Also, you'll see that I have links to the Diesel Strength Training Catalog. It's got a list of all my products there. So if you're looking for something to help with your grippers or lifting the blob or the inch dumbbell, or if you want to put some muscle on your arms, I have products related to all those training initiatives. So you can pick up an ebook or a DVD anytime you want to through that catalog link. And then the final thing that I've got in there is the link to begin coaching in the diesel grip task force. And what that is, that's my online coaching program. I'll we'll set up a, a an initial call that's usually an hour long, and we go through everything that we need to in order to get you a program started. And then I will send you a program uh, that you'll complete. Once completed, you'll send the completed uh, document back to me. And then from there, I will go through, reassess everything, and assign you work for the following week. We also do follow-up coaching calls every two weeks and as well as you'll get uh, complimentary access to my website thegripauthority.com and that's uh, a website that I've been running since 2010 so there's about 10 solid years of information there tutorials um, video demos articles interviews audio downloads all kinds of things are up on that website um, including other recordings that I've done and workouts of the month from past months. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, just a treasure trove of information related to grip and feats of strength. So that comes free with, for anyone that jumps into the coaching program. So if you're looking to solidify your grip training and you want to go to the next level, then go to the description box of this YouTube video or any YouTube video that I've uploaded in the last couple weeks, you'll be able to see a link that takes you right to the grip task force, my online coaching and programming, and we can start working together right away. All right, let's go ahead and uh, go through some of these recent comments. The first one is on the video storm Cholino inch dumbbell, thumbless and, th and thumbed lift. So this is about a year or so ago. This probably went up and, 
Um, Storm is a pro arm wrestler. Absolute world-class elite arm wrestler. He's unbelievable. And he's recently... Well, this video was the first time that he did a thumbless lift, but he's since done an inch dumbbell in each hand thumbless. So, including, he was able to walk them a little bit. So, um, Seeker of Truth says, Damn, bro, I hear he can walk a distance with two of them now. And the lofty goal is to replicate Shaw's incline press. That's very possible. I don't know. Maybe that is something that Storm's working on, the, the double inch incline press. I hadn't heard that. I know that I've tried that once, and getting them into position for just a flat bench press is super, super hard. So kicking them up into an incline press position is going to be even harder. So if Storm's working on that, then I, I wish him the best. That's going to be an awesome feat to see. And next, the next few um, are on the video, Kingly Q&A, would Brian Shaw break all the grip sport world records? This was... This was a question that someone asked here in the YouTube channel, and I thought it was pretty cool, and everybody seems to enjoy the Brian Shaw videos. So I went ahead and put this one up, and pretty much I said that, well, what I go over in the video is what some of the, some of the things that I think he would automatically dominate at, and then also I talk about how we could possibly set up a comp, uh, competition where uh, I actually make it harder for him to dominate the competition. So based on, you know, picking the proper events, I think there's a chance that I could beat him. Now, if I didn't have the control over those events, then I, I probably wouldn't have a chance. Uh, Brian is extremely strong, guys. So, you know, he's, he's going to have an advantage on a lot of different things. But there are some things where technique is just so important that I, I feel that, that a grip enthusiast, a grip specialist could beat him. Uh, as long as the the proper events were selected. So here's some of the comments. Sam Smith, I'd like to see Mark Felix and Brian Shaw go head-to-head -head too. Yeah, absolutely. That would be awesome. I think they'd be very, very closely matched. Uh, Mark Felix is, is an, an awesome grip guy. I mean, he's set world records on multiple implements. And uh, most recently, I know that he set records on the Denny hold at the Arnold. He's set the Hercules hold record in strongman recently, uh, last year at the Arnold in 2019, he set, or he didn't, I guess he didn't set it, but he went for the world record in the double inch farmer's carry. So tremendous potential on Mark Felix as well. Randy Gentry said, Brian's forearms are bigger than my calves. It would be fun to see a grip duel. And I agree. I think there are 2,700 robocalls. All of a sudden, an ad popped up where people were talking. Sorry about that, guys. Um, oh, and then uh, everyone's everyone's favorite troll, uh, mentally challenged training, says, "Of course, he could break some of the records, but I don't really think he would care about a sport where the only thing that matters is being genetically gifted with nine inch plus hands." Brian chose the right sport and is constantly pushing his limits with hard work and deserves the respect, unlike you, my friend. So that's directed at me. So um, this mentally challenged training, uh, pretty much everybody believes that he is also, uh, um, oh, bamboo. Yeah, bamboo training. So mentally challenged training, most people think is also bamboo training. It's literally the, the avatar for the channel is a picture of bamboo training. Uh, I also think that he's the same as Mr. Strength. And there's another dude on here with like where the names are like all letters. And it's like AAA, BBB, DDD, stuff like that. And um, I think they're all the same dude personally. They're, I mean, these people are just trolls. They got nothing better to do with their time. But what's, what's cool is aside from being pests towards me, uh, you know, in my opinion, also a, a bunch of you are also replying to this guy, uh, letting him know that he's, you know, an idiot as well. So don't put too much time into it, guys. I don't want to see you waste a bunch of time. Make sure it's toilet time. Like when you're dropping a deuce, go ahead and check out the videos and see, you know, what this idiot has had to say recently. Another one. I've been wondering this for a while. Very interesting analysis. That was from Ahmad Munem. On the Kingly Q and A, would Brian Shaw break all the grip records? Next, uh, T Krebs One says, 
Jed, where do I find a Pluto grip implement? Could Lucas build one? I want more ways to make these claws stronger. So um, I think the Pluto is a little bitty implement that John Oka makes. So you want to you wanna look up John Oka. Um, whether Luke can make one, I'm sure he can. I don't know if he has yet. I don't, know. I don't even know when that implement came out. I just saw a couple people training with it, like, either this past weekend or the weekend before. So, but John Oka, I believe, is the person who came up with that one. Another comment on the Brian Shaw video. This is from Sealed Chamber. It's always very interesting to speculate about questions like these. Like you said, there's more nuance to it than simply brute strength and hand size. And hand size can be a detriment depending on the implement. I wonder how the strongest NFL players would do in grip or strength sports if we existed in some alternate universe where they paid millions of dollars instead of... Uh, instead of instead and thus were picked as a main sport more often so yeah um the the nfl guys a lot of them are are huge as well and are extremely strong and even after they're done playing you know they may not be as quick and agile or maybe they've gotten a few injuries and they're not able to play to the same level that they were once able to play but even NFL players, after they're done playing for several years, I'm sure they have tremendous potential for grip sport. Some of those dudes are just so, so big and athletic. Even after they've been called out of the league, you know, they're still more athletic than many of us. So it would, it would definitely be really cool to see what they're, what they're able to do. Uh, let's see. Here's another one. Jed, can you do a video on forearm, hand, and wrist recovery? Do you ice, use heat, compression? What are your top tips for recovery? So, yeah, um, I actually did take note of that question, and I'm going to do a video on here for recovery. But also, guys, take note that I have all that information already up on thegripauthority.com. So it's literally a dollar for you to join for one month. Um, so if you feel like supporting me and my efforts, then go to thegripauthority.com, and not only will... You do just that, support me, but you'll also be able to access a tremendous amount of information. And I know that there's recovery information in there for the forearms, hands, and wrists. So check that out because uh, I don't know when I will end up doing that video. That's, that's going to take much more time than just answering some Q&As. All right. I think that's about it for the Brian Shaw video. So let's slide back up here. And I saw... So I recently put up that video. It's called One of the Absolute Hardest Feats I've Done. And it was where I do the curl along with the, the blob curl along with the 200-pound the anvil. And BWL Assad says, that's why that you are the king of pinch. That's right, brother. I am the king of pinch. And you are my loyal subject of pinch. Thank you. Another comment from BWL Assad, and this is on a, a very, very old video. It's several years old, probably from like 20, 2011, 2012. How to measure the strength of a gripper. And he says, that is a very good and informative video concerning gripper rating. Shows how complicated it is and how much time you need to put in. I made an overview video of all the brands of hardcore grippers that were mentioned by you and other grip YouTubers to give people an overview of the differences in rating and how you can use different brands to speed up your progress in closing those big grippers. Would love to see and hear your take on that. And I also took a screenshot of that and I plan on doing a video you know, in, in, in reflection of that video that you posted as well, BWL. And he made another post on my video, was Joe Kinney a fraud or legit? And this is from a couple Decembers ago. I guess at some point I bring up Nathan Hawley. I don't know if it was in the, the video or if it was in the comments section, but um, he says Nathan Hawley is definitely legit. I think what that comes from is... Um, Nathan Holly was putting up videos where they were like almost 10 years old and he was putting them up on Instagram. So the question that I raised was, why are you pulling up all these old videos? Let's see what you got right now. So he did start putting up more videos since then, you know, more recently. 
and um, they seem to be you know fairly recent. So um, that's cool. I'm I mean I'm glad to see that. <clears throat> I don't know if I was really questioning whether it was legit or not, but you know that's yet to be seen. All right, yesterday I put up a video. Uh, it was called How to Bridge Gaps Between Grippers, and this one got a lot of responses, so I want to go through some of these. Uh, Melissa Rayom says, awesome info, great work, stay safe. Thank you very much, Melissa. This is from Nashville, dude. I have another question. Why was I not able to close a 2.5 at all? Took a break from grippers while still doing arm wrestling training and pinch grip training and came back and closed a 2.5 relatively easily. That's a... That's a good question. You don't hear about that much. Generally, you don't you don't go away from something and get better at it. Um, you can go away from something, and when you go back to it, find that you're better at it if you've been doing something similar. So you might stop training Rolling Thunder because you're sick of it not actually rolling, and you do some other implements like a wrist wrench or a crusher or, or one hand nightmare then when you go back to the rolling thunder and you test it you see that your lifts have gone up that's because you've been working with an implement implement that actually rolls and the action that you're you're getting out of those other implements makes the rolling thunder feel much more much easier so that happens now actually going away from grippers for a time coming back and seeing an improvement i don't know what that could be there's a few there's a few possibilities I mean, are you using the same two and a half? Because you don't say you went back and closed the or that two and a half relatively easy. You said you came back and closed a two and a half relatively easy. So if you were if you were if you were training on a two point five before, and then just grabbed a different one, I mean, it might be ten pounds lighter. So or even twelve. So I've rated two, uh, two and a halfs that have been twelve pounds difference between those two. So that's a possibility. The other thing is you might have just lined it up in your hand better because I don't know what your set looks like. If you line it up better where you're in more of an optimal position, then it can make a gripper feel a lot easier when it's in a good position. So it's, it's hard to tell. I'd have to speculate. Hugo says on my How to Bridge Gaps Between Grippers video, should one also train closing the grippers in an inverted position? I'd like to train in a manner in which all the fingers receive the same workload. Thanks in advance. Well, if you want to, I don't know if grippers are going to do that for you. I don't, I don't know that that's true, that you'll, that all the fingers will receive the same workload by training grippers in any way. But yeah, if, if you want to work your hand a bit more equally, I suppose you could turn the gripper upside down. I don't know a lot of people that do that. I don't know a lot of people who close big grippers who work in the inverted gripper position either. So it's just not a position that I know much about. I never did too much of it. You know, every once in a while there would be a challenge come out that people would invert the gripper and then squeeze it, you know. But I never I never did much I never did much work with that. The only exception would have been for my, my last two fingers using a really, really light gripper. So that's that's up to you. That's that's totally up to you. Uh, Randy Gentry on the how to bridge gap between grippers. Thumbs up. Progression. Too bad these koalas and pandas won't grasp it. So I'm not sure exactly what he's saying there. Um, oh, another post from our good old friend Mentally Challenged Training. So in the in the video, how to bridge gaps between grippers, I said I am the king of pinch, and for the next couple minutes, I'm the king of grippers. That's called a joke, guys. Um, apparently, this guy doesn't know the difference because he says king of grippers. You can't even close a 3.5 anymore. I am pretty sure I can close a 3.5. Um, I think I've put that up here recently on the channel, so I don't know why you're saying that. AK Calderon comes in and says, and now this is in reply to Mentally Challenged Training. He says, what's up, Bamboo? What are you doing in that profile? And then Dylan Boswick says, shut up, troll. Why is your profile a picture of Bamboo Training? If you created that profile just to troll one person, you really need to get a life. Anyways, can you close a 3.5? I doubt it. So thanks for the backing, guys. It is appreciated. Just don't uh, take too much that he says to heart because he is obviously an anonymous YouTube troll and you can't get much sadder than that. Psychophant T uh, says, haven't been able to do 2.5 for years. 
that's too bad, brother. I, uh, you know, if, if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. I generally do, um, like a, like a coaching points video, areas of opportunity. I'll, I'll watch a video that you send me and I'll give you points that you can work on in order to prove, improve your, your form, your technique, your placement, all that stuff to help you with your grippers. I just ran a special on that last week, actually for 30 minute coaching call. You're going to be seeing more of that for this week on YouTube because that offer is going to go out just to YouTube, um, followers. So stay tuned to that. Um, and then, uh, Philo 68 says thirst exclamation point, which I think he's just having, a, having some fun there because he was first to comment. All right, let's slide it back up. And they're just recently put up, a an episode of, Oh, actually, uh, before we get into that, we'll go into the comments that uh, were that were put up on my Devin Larratt and King Napalm Arm Wrestling Basics video. So we'll slide down through those, then we'll do what's in your grip bag, grip bug out bag, and um, cover those, and then we'll be all done for this episode of This Week in Grip. By the way, guys, it'll help me out big time if you give the show a thumbs up. Also, if you have any comments that you'd like to put in the comment section, that would be great. And I'll remind you to check out the description box and you'll be able to, you'll be able to make your purchases on Amazon through my link and it'll, it'll help us out and support the YouTube channel a little bit as well. Uh, there's a link in the description box for my product catalog as well as my coaching program. So Hugo says... King Napalm and No Limits. That would make a great tag team partner in wrestling. No doubt, brother. And we're both, you know, I'm 6'2 and a half, and he's about 6'5", I believe. So we'd be pretty intimidating, dude. Not just with our athletic prowess and strength, but just the fact that we're over six feet tall. I mean, that would just kill someone like mentally challenged training to have to look at two dudes that are so much taller than he is. All right. What else we got here? He seemed like a fast learner. That's from David Sanders on that Devin Larratt video. And yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a decent learner. I'm, I really don't have any interest in arm wrestling, but it was excellent time. It was, I love learning guys. I mean, come on. I try to get to clinics every single year. Strength clinics learn more. I go to, I go to speeches on stuff that I, that have absolutely nothing to do with the kinds of training that I do. I, I love learning. So it's even better to be able to learn hands on on an arm wrestling table with somebody. So I, I appreciated the opportunity to do it. No doubt about it. Plus I appreciate the fact that Devin and storm Tolino allowed me to upload the video onto my YouTube channel. I, I appreciate it big time. Some more from that video. Uh, Raker 1980 says awesome. Uh, Daziki Dazik put some stuff up in a different language. I don't know what that is. R. Hansen says, I envy you being taught by the best. Absolutely, brother. Don't envy me. Just, uh, you can be proud of me if you want to. You can be happy for me, but don't envy me. E.J. Olgan says, wow, it's so cool to watch uh, two amazing people who are like role models in different ways come together. I am like so, so excited and happy inside. Thanks a lot, E.J. You've been a supporter for a long, long time. Appreciate it. Great video from Mysterious Entity. Sweet from Mike Rinderly. Sean King says, the duo we didn't know we need. And Trade Wizard replies, 100%. Cool video. I loved it. That's from Tim. What else we got? I know there's more. I know there's more comments on that video. It's just taking a little bit of time to load. I, I really appreciate all the, all the comments, guys. Uh, I try to reply to a many to as many of them as possible, but I don't always get the opportunity to. So if you post on a video and I don't reply to you in some way, please don't take it personally. It's not that I don't want to. It's just, uh, you know, we're all busy and sometimes I don't have as much time as I would like to, to reply to the comments that I do get. So I'm going to try to click on the link for this video and Maybe it'll be, maybe it'll allow me to see more of the comments that were on that, that were on that video with Devin Larratt. Tried to play an ad. All right, let's slide down through here. Uh, 
So Ronan the Troll Slayer says, I like watching vids like this. They make for good little instruction videos from the master. It's a different sort it's a different sort of fatigue, etc. Huh? Pretty cool. I'm just learning. Never felt anything like it before. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I enjoy I enjoy arm wrestling, the fatigue you get. Uh, I like working with Luke on the table. He actually just brought his table down. We may end up doing some stuff. It's a good workout. I like the pump, stuff like that. I just don't like the, the fact that I'm so injury prone. Um, Clint Dog 99 nothing like learning some tips from one of the best. That's exactly why I am here too. And Clint Dog is a member of the gripauthority.com. Thank you for your support, Clint Dog 99 Old buddy Eli Thomas says, that's awesome, Jed. That guy is a monster in arm wrestling. Yes, he is, dude. He's a great guy as well. Daniel says, you seem like you could take a few rounds from Devin if you practice regularly. Insane grip. Your thumb strength would help you tremendously with gripping positions also. That's that's very possible, brother. Thanks for the support. Maybe, uh, maybe next time I'll actually ask him to give me some live action. We'll see. Uh, OW arm sports says, I am sure napalm can be a great arm wrestler if he decided to, but he is more interested in grip. Yes, sir. I am. And I am not interested at all in injuries and I am way too injury prone. Nick says the Jeff Goldblum of arm wrestling informative session, taking notes. Very cool. Brother Corey, Corey Wohike says, always cool to see two legends in the same room. There were actually many more legends in the room, brother. It's just there were only two on the video. Here's the other uh, account that I think is the same dude as Bamboo Training and Mentally Challenged Training. It's ASDFGHJKL, which I'm just realizing that he's using the, uh, the letters on the keyboard in order. And then his last name is DFGH. D F G H J H G C G Y U I G F U Y whatever whatever dude. Uh, he says he should have broke your arm. Great post, brother. Thank you. Click some ads. Matthew Culbertson, how solid did Devin feel? I know you are a strong guy, Jed. Let me tell you something, dude. There was like no chance I was moving his arm. That's how strong he was. Can't go wrong listening and training with Devin, says Scott300. He's the greatest ambassador of all time. Gives back so much and gives away so much information. That's right, brother. Bamboo training comes in. Do you still bend nails or close grippers? Haven't seen you doing this stuff anymore. Can you still bend the red nail? I don't know. Probably. I'm not sure. I'm not interested in doing it. It's too hard on me, and I don't like hurting. I'd, I'd much rather lift pain-free than see if I can bend a red nail. I'm more interested in helping other people get to that goal. So uh, I probably won't see that anytime soon. Uh, do I still close grippers? Yes. Randy Gentry, careful, King Pinch. Arm wrestling is addicting. I'm sure it is, brother. I've felt, I've felt bits and pieces of that, and I think it could definitely be addicting. Uh, Fjorn Monk. Did you two pull with any effort? And if so, was it filmed? Nope. Didn't really have a match or anything. We just went over technique stuff. Mysterious Entity says, great video. Uh, bamboo Training. Why didn't you guys actually arm wrestled? Come on, man. This would have been great to see. No interest, brother. No interest. Um, bamboo says, we don't care about the Corona brother. We're freaks. Apparently he thought that this was just like a recently taped video. It's actually a video from January, bro. Same time as when I was in Canada before. What the hell? And then he asked me, how much does Lerat dumbbell curl? So then I say, how in the hell am I supposed to know? And uh, he goes by fucking asking him, and I go, he has a YouTube channel. Why don't you go ask him? I wasn't bugging him about his one rep maxes while we were on the table. Come on, dude. Let's go. You're better than that, Bam. Well, you're not really better than that, but, you know, I'd expect more out of you. All right. And then we'll do one more. We'll do one more series of um, comments. And we'll, what this is going to be, this is uh, this will be comments from episode 129 of This Week in Grip. So, looks like it's going to take a little bit for it to load. 
So I'm going to do this just a little bit different way. I'm going to go into my the back end of my channel and I'm going to go to the actual video so I can read those comments. I wish it was faster. I really wish it was faster, but it's not, brother. We'll uh, we'll go through this video and then we'll wrap this up. So as this is loading, just a reminder, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, check out the description box with uh, some pretty cool links that you can use to support the channel. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> it's going to try to play an ad here, guys. Sorry. Pause that. Well, that's a pretty cool tune. I could lift to that. All right, let's see if these comments will show up. All right, so there's 22. Base, so this is the video where I ask people to post what they're what they would have in their grip bug out bag, meaning if they had to like beat feet, throw some stuff into a duffel bag and get the hell out of town, what would they take with them? Or if they were going into their uh, life saving bunker. What would you take down there with you? And we already said that weights, loading pins, carabiners, and chalk would be there. All right. So Marcus L. says, based on the equipment that I own, a 2.5-inch rolling trilobite, 2-inch axle, sledgehammer, ingot pinch block, and number 2 gripper. Nice little mix there. Randy Gentry, my five items, all five fingers, because I'm accruing grip stuff for home anyway and feel I got enough challenges for at least this year, so let's bring on 2020 already. P. McGuffin says, let's see, since loading pin and plates are already included, I would have to say wrist wrench, two and a half inch rolling handle, blob trainer, my grippers, and my hub trainer. So basically all of my implements I brought home a month ago. The only thing I didn't include that I have is my smaller two inch wrist wrench that I made because I have, that I made because I have six and you said to pick five, LOL. A.K. Calderon, one is his barbell and plates for the deadlift. Two, his 12-pound sledgehammer. Three, fat grips. Four, iron mine block, uh, pinch block. And five, towels for pull-ups. Kyokin Complete says, I thought we did this one already or something similar. We, we might have. I don't know. I'm not sure. Luckily, it's changed. So he's got different selections now. He says, a 20... Slash 25 kilogram plate pair, half 90 blob, dynamometer, two and a half inch trilobite, my stamped York plate. He says, P.S. Don't believe anything China says. I'm with you, brother. All right. Jesse Eats, which we know this is Jesse Pinman, says, Flask, Crusher 2.5, Little Bighorn, inch, 145 pounds blob. That's all I'd need. But for the next few months, all I'd need is King Kong devices. Thank God we have a private warehouse full of grip devices and only two of us train there. I just love the flask. Ha ha. For some reason, I could easily train daily with it without, without skin tears. Not that I get tears from any implement. Well, you are very lucky. Here's Mr. Strength. He says, here before Randy Gentry comments. Ooh, tough guy. Ooh. Todd B. Craft, a few grippers and my fat grips. Rian Gallagher, fat grips extreme, a York barbell. Two loadable dumbbells, about 100 kilograms of weight, and my COC 2.5, the gripper I'm currently working with the most. I'm in the process of procuring a rolling thunder and a pin, so that too if we can have six items, and a sledge if I can have seven. Hey, dude, I said five. Let's go. You don't want to take that rolling thunder with you anyway, dude. Get a better handle. Vulcan Gripper, 8-pound sledge, thumb screws for pinch, bands for extensor training, and blue fat grips. That's from Philo68. And then the last one we got here is the Madman Podcast. He says, I'm in southeastern Pennsylvania, and it was 60 today. Actually, the whitetail bucks haven't even shed all their antlers yet down here. So apparently I was talking about antler sheds in that episode of This Week in Grip. What a crazy year, man. I'm no gripaholic yet, but I'm taking this time to try and close the Grip Genie Blue number two. I have the eight-pound sleds, Grip Genie Green number one, and Grip Genie grip, uh, grip Genie Pinch Block tied up to a 25-pound kettlebell and a paracord and a band with Nalgene bottle wrapped around my basement beam for cupping. I'm new to all this, but it's really fun to work on stuff I never thought about strengthening before. I just got back from a four-day backpack trip along the Appalachian Trail. 
I do every year to look for white tail antlers to make lamps and shelves, etc. Only found four. Usually I'll cover 15 miles and find between 20 and 50. Weirdest year. Thank you for the content, guys. And thank you, Madman Podcast, for for commenting. And thank everybody else that has recently commented. I know I didn't read them all because some of them were on videos that were just scattered about. And I tried to stick with the same videos. All the same videos where we talked about stuff. So... Hope you liked that episode of This Week in Grip. This has been episode 130. One more time, give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps us out here at the podcast. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. If there's anything that you'd like to add to the discussion items, go ahead and do that in the comments section below. And I'll just remind you, you can go into the description box and you'll be able to see the link where you can go to Amazon through my uh, Amazon Associates link. It'll come back and support us. Really appreciate that. The link to the full strength catalog of mine is also there. You can go and pick up any grip ebook or arm uh, building ebook program, DVD, anything that I've put out is there as well as if you're looking for some professional coaching, if you want to get it done, go to the next level with some programming with yours truly, Napalm Jed, the King of Pinch, then let's do this, brother. Sign up through that link today. And all the best in your training, everybody. Take care.